Hello and welcome back to Salt and Sanctuary. So last time, well, like two days ago, we reached Sam Lake over here, but we had some loose ends to follow. So last episode, I went north. Well, I went up. And we found three uh, bosses that I guess must have been optional because I had never seen any of them before and gotten this far. But uh, we went through the de we went up to the ruins and everything and saw what was up there. Now it's time to go down into this place that immediately gives me Ash Lake feels because it has the big tall trees and it's called a lake and this looks like a beach. Ash Lake is a weird place, by the way. For those that don't know, it, it's a place that looks a little like this actually in the first Dark Souls game. Try Flame and Holy. Is that a boss fight? Wow. It's a boss fight right there. Okay then. Flame and Holy. Well, good for me. Those are the two things that. <laughs> those are my two elements of attack. So I guess I'm good to go. Uh, but th there's a place like this in Dark Souls that was weirdly enough supposed to be like the central base for like the second half of the game, or at least that's the suspected thing, but uh, it just kind of became this weird optional area that you could just never see. And this, I don't know, maybe this one's more mandatory, because I don't know where else I'm going to go at this point. The Witch of the Lake. I'm sure she's nice. You said try Flame and Holy, right? Well, lucky me. Ow. Ow. She seems nice. Oh. Alright. Well, she can kill you quickly. The good news is I have no salt to lose, really, and... I am not particularly attached to my gold in the first place. So that wasn't too bad. Seemed like I was perfectly capable of doing a pretty big chunk of damage relatively quickly. I just need to actually avoid what was going on there. And in, in my defense, I was already airborne when she started that attack. There wasn't much getting out of the way at that point. How nice of them to put her right next to a sanctuary so I don't even have to backtrack at all, really. Hello. Oop. Nope. I'm just gonna hang out under, underneath you here, if you don't mind. Oh god. Well. She has another trick for me to instantly die to and then try to react to next time. <laughs> so she shoots out a vortex ball that does a homing attack. Okay. Well, she's two for two for instant killing me with something I've never seen before. <laughs> Hopefully we can learn to avoid it. The other, the first one was easy, just get behind her, or just generally don't... Just generally move to get around it. Uh, this one will be interesting. It looked like a lot of tentacles coming out of me at once, which could be hard to avoid. My first instinct is jump, but how, how effective in the long term is jump out of the way of that? Oop. What an especially dodgeable attack. Oop. I say as I die to it. I'm getting the distinct feeling that this might be a boss fight that is most easily fought with a weapon, I mean with a shield that has arcane resistance. Because, <laughs> dear lord. It is relatively easy just to get caught up in that and get wiped the hell out. She's not very durable, though. I don't have to let make it last for that long. I just need to last. There we go. I don't think she's going to poison me. She might be poisonable, though. So I thought I'd throw some on my weapon just to check. Hey! She is poisonable. Oh, there's the humming attack, by the way. So what, she's just vulnerable to everything, then? The thing said holy and fire, and I'm killing her right now with poison. I think she just might be generally vulnerable. Oh. Ow. She got me. She gave me a smack. How you doing, lady? You seem nice. Uh-oh, here it comes. There, there it comes. There it comes. Alright, that wasn't so bad. So, yes. She was a witch, so I thought maybe she wouldn't be poisonable, but yes, very poisonable. <laughs> Did she not drop anything? There's the ear. Right. I keep thinking I have to pick something up when, of course, it just gets automatically added, added to your inventory. She's very poisonable. <laughs> the Ear of Syrah, the Witch of the Lake. The younger of the two twins, she guards Sam Lake, an unnatural reservoir of salt magic that feeds into salt al alchemancery? That must be nearby, right? If the lake feeds into it, that must be where we're going because there's a twin witch, apparently. 
or I mean, it could be a guy. Uh, her sister. Nope, it's a girl. Her sister, the architect, then uses it for her pow her foul purposes. Well, let's go find this architect then. Must just be right past this location or something. Well, she was very, very poisonable. I kind of just threw it out there as a gamble. Like, I wonder what happens if I hit her with poison. And it's like, oh no, she she poisonable as hell. That was that was not what I was expecting. Do I have a leader yet? There we go. I haven't had another leader for a while. I could go find one again, I guess, but uh, I don't have the I don't have the little icons memorized very well, so I'd, I'd have to teleport to a lot of locations to figure out. Do I have one yet? Oh, I have split swordsman. Cool. So we have different directions we can go in here. I can get an extra healing item. I can go for a mana restoration item if I ever want to go further into casting, which so far I'm not. Uh, something that applies poison to my weapon, which is a little redundant when I have magic that does that now. Or just go full in and get 25 more wraith fangs. <laughs> I, th an extra healing item would be nice. I would also like to get more wraith fangs just because it would be cool to- Oh cool, I just have to go kill a, some more cave keepers and I'll get the la that last one. I think that's the guy- the big ghoul with the, uh, the axe for a hand, I think? I think that's what a cave keeper is. Alright, now we have eight. But yeah, wraith fangs aren't too bad. I don't have a lot of reason to use wraith fangs in general with the current we weapon setup. It's mostly a boss thing and 25 is usually more than enough. Uh, so it really comes down to just getting more healing items, and that's less for boss fights, and more for the concept of, uh, just being prepared to, uh, just outlast when I'm- when I'm trying to navigate through huge areas at just having a nice supply of healing items for myself. Alright, let's head out past the boss fight area then, with my renewed supply of healing items. Onward! This game definitely seems to have the, uh, the Dark Souls thing in particular, I mean, it has everything. That's that's a dumb sense to even start because everything about this game is Dark Soulsy. Oh, there it is. The salt, Alchemancery. I'm gonna say is probably how you call that. Oh, Alchemancery, because it's like, like necromancy and so on and so forth. But alky, as in like alkaline, which is what this is a word that describes something as being salty. <laughs> there we go. Uh, but this game has the I'm, I'm recognizing like a Dark Souls style difficulty curve to this game. Because if you play any Dark Souls game, really, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, so on and so forth, and even oftentimes the games that are inspired by it, uh, a lot of those games have a get start off really hard. A lot of the oopsie, that's bad. Can I just end you real quick? There we go. I'm gonna have to put that uh, those antidotes back on. There we go. Uh, and all of the Souls-like games tend to have a certain tendency to have an uneven difficulty curve where they're often very difficult early on as a mixture of you figuring out the mechanics, but also the, uh, oftentimes your character just doesn't quite have a build yet and you don't have equipment, and it's so, like there's a, you have less tools at your disposal. Is it, is this wind? That's exactly what this is. Get levitated by wind. <clears throat> Am I gonna move at all? Because, uh... Oh, can I go up with this? Or jump? Seems awkward. Can I go past it? I can. Does this try to suck me into it? Um, uh, I think anyone who played the first Dark Souls, for example, is probably well aware of the fact that, like, it, it probably kicked your ass a lot in the first half. And up through Anor Orlando, perhaps. But then I think a lot of people find after Anor Orlando, the game kind of just gets progressively easier. In many ways. Well, to the point where you, uh, you might find you, that you beat the last several bosses without even dying. In fact, I beat—I th think I did beat the last several bosses without dying when I played Dark Souls the first time, including the final boss, Gwyn, which you'd think would be a big thing. Although, there's also a thing where perhaps that some people suspected that the final bosses in Souls games are intentionally easy. The Witch of the Lake's Ear. No. <laughs> Saltless as ashes. Ash, ashes of the Saltless, the architect's vast army of salt-born creatures, serves her every whim while these pitiful creatures are doomed to forever search for that one vital essence it can never procure. They are driven to find salt for their master, but are never given the chance to consume it. They're like these weird, like, salt honeybees. That's not an object for me to jump on. <laughs> but I don't know about you, but I don't know if you guys agree or not, but I, I found that Dark Souls just got really easy near the end. But there's also a thing where, like, yeah, every... 
the last, the final boss. Is this a shrine? Please? Cool. I was really worried it was a boss fight. I found that the last, last boss of, uh, well, everyone knows the last boss of Demon Souls is hilariously easy. But I found the last boss of, uh, of Dark Souls 2 easy, and Dark Souls 1 easy, and I thought the last, the final, 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 final boss of Bloodborne I thought was exceptionally easy also. Without spoiling anything about who that is, because that's the most spoilable of all the Souls games right now. Due to its, uh, console exclusivity, exclusivity and some people still not quite getting a chance to play it yet. Let's go up. I'm sorry, are we playing Sonic the Hedgehog right now with, like, the chemical plant? <laughs> this game is definitely surprising me from time to time. Hey, buddy, how you doing? You doing good? Combo! Oh, God! Kill it with fire. Kill it with fire. Damn. Uh, I finally had a chance to do my show-off combo. Like, ha-ha, ha-ha, ha-ha. And, uh... It, I combo directly into a mimic. That was a that was a nasty surprise. Of like midway through the combo, I just realized, oh, the the chest is gone. Oh, the chest is gone. <laughs> I know what that means. That's a fun little combo to do. I don't know if combos are ultimately super useful to me. I don't know. The problem that I have with doing combos in Souls games, in this game and other games like it, is that if you play the type of weapons I often play, which are kind of dex. I often play, like, the dex slash skill weapons, the light weapons that might be faster or have extra reach or might just be kind of gimmicky. Uh, hey, Eyeball Scorpion. How you doing? Do you guys not turn each other in invincible or anything? Oh. Whoa, where's he going? Dude's getting the hell out of here, huh? Die. I find that, uh, the weapons tend to not stagger enemies, and then that kind of nullifies the entire concept of a combo, because you'll try to get two hits into your combo, and then the, the enemies will just, uh... The enemies will just... Oh, God. Second jump happened faster than I was ready for. Oh, you dick. I find that the, uh, the enemies will just hit you back in the middle of your combo, totally nullifying the point of trying to do a combo in the first place, because they'll just interrupt your combo, and then maybe murder you, because these are games where you die very quickly, in many cases. I f Despite the fact that combos seem like a more of a... They seem like inherently like they'd be more like a, a light weapon type of thing, I find that they're actually more in favor of heavy weapons, because if you're using heavy weapons, you often have heavy armor, and you're able to take a hit without staggering, perhaps, or even uh, without having a big... Uh, cost be- oh! Placed on your health. Hey, buddy. Oh, he's dead. So much for that. <laughs> I was like, let's see what we do to him. Yeah, I find that, uh, if your weapon doesn't stagger, or you die quickly in a few hits, it's kind of- it's not always a great idea to even try to, uh... Let's see if I can reach this real quick. Nope. Try again real quick. It seems like a kind of a waste to try to combo, just because they're just gonna knock you out of your combo, anyway. I really just blew that really bad. Nope. I just wanna see if I can grab it. I'm trying to hit up. Nope, maybe not. I think they might not be climbable until you kick them down, no matter what their current position is. Upwards? Oh god. Bad surprise. Oh, oh crap. Oh, okay. There we go. Nailed it. I'm bad at these because I don't know. I'm not. I'm not always sure where I'm supposed to try to go next, and then that moment of hesitation is just how you fall. Up oh, there we go. Oh God, there we go. We're up here now. It's all good. This often led to a, a contradiction where I would. Uh, some people got really frustrated watching me play Bloodborne because I would. I would get my big weapon. And I'd be like, oh, this weapon's amazing because it has so much reach. And then I would I would fight my way through the entire game. Can I knock this down? There we go. I'd fight my way through the entire game by just doing a, a heavy attack over and over again. Because even though it's Bloodborne and it's a fast game, I'd be all like, no, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna wait for openings on my enemies. And I'm going to charge up this power hit and just flatten them with this uh, sword and stuff like that. As opposed to comboing like ever, basically. <laughs> And some people are like, why don't you ever combo? I'm like, well, this is working, so stop it. <laughs> Let me do me, man. Here we go. More frozen dolls and maybe a dead end. Oh, hello. Hi. What do you got for me? 
Static Geist. Why are we using all foreign ghost words? A powerful spirit of sky, it seeks out enemies of its caster, exploding in devastating lightning. That the fabric of sky can not only be shaped and controlled, but made to do the bidding of its master, is a testament to the brilliance of the continent's most prominent elementalists. I mean, I gotta find out what's up here, right? At least they seem to be solid platforms instead of, uh... The problematic type that try to drop me. There we go. Careful. No! <laughs> Come on. Take me! Take me! God damn it. There we go. Where are we right now exactly? I don't trust you, chest. Oh, for good reason. Oh god. Forgot about forgot I had a torch out. So I tried to shoot him with a torch. Ineffective strategy. Mimics suddenly became super common, didn't they? The aristocrat's corset. A magnificent silk corset. It must have been it must have commanded great value on the continents and have been affordable only by the wealthiest nobles. Class Zero Light Armor. Just something to wear if you want to be all silly with your dress. I feel bad because I, I don't quite read every single item description, but... And I don't quite try on every single item, but... I gotta say, man, this game... Has exceptional item density. <laughs> I think they may have overdone it a bit. Oh, we're, about, we're at Cran's Pass, right? Yeah. She should be right up there. I believe. Yeah. There we go. Alright, shortcut back to a previous location. Check. But yeah, I think the, uh... This game might even overdo it a little bit on sheer number of, uh... Of, of like, pieces of equipment, and, uh... I think part of what makes it a little exhausting is actually the fact that every single enemy has their own unique drops! I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, the fact that every single enemy has a completely unique, uh, item for them also amplifies it of, like... Dear Lord, there's a lot of items. Like, this is a relatively short game compared to others, like Souls games, for example. But, uh, dear Lord, have you seen my inventory a few times lately? Because it, it, it goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. And I gotta say, uh, some of the descriptions very interesting, but a decent number of the descriptions very uninteresting. So, mixed bag there, too. Well, I got my salt back. And so we continue on, but now there's respawns. Yeah! Hey guys. He's- Ow, ow, oh god. Um, I'm learning things about my enemies. I don't want to learn. They're huggy- they're a huggy bunch. Ow! Um... Rude? You know, I don't even need to play with you guys. Go away. <laughs> I'm not even going that way. So fine, be lonely. I wouldn't be surprised if my earlier t mention of, uh, liking to do hit and run tactics and... Careful one by one attacks is probably part of. I've probably been to this side of this room before. Oh crap! Guess we forgot that their torch takes a while to go away, so before they can shoot. This guy. Oh, those ones. Those attacks went straight through him. That was weird. Where is he? He's around there somewhere. Or something. <laughs> Blow him away. I believe I've been here. I'm sure I have. I've, I've explored this place. Yeah, I remember those guys up there. I remember that. I don't know where that guy went, though. Did I kill him? The ghosts seem to just kind of wander off. Yeah, my, my bias in favor of uh, slow, methodical gameplay and uh, carefully avoiding attacks and finding openings and stuff is probably part of why I like Dark Souls games more than uh, Bloodborne. This is all, I'm sure, very interesting commentary if you are a really long-time subscriber and really completely un irrelevant to, <laughs> to for anyone who was just here for Salt and uh, Sanctuary. <laughs> hey, friend. Go down. Just give me your ashes. Cool. Diamond Cluster. Have I had one of those yet? I don't remember if I had one. I know that I wanted one for a long time. Or just, or at least it was listed as a valuable object for a long time for transmutations or something. 
Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Which one of these things looks like a diamond cluster in this giant inventory? Inventory of, like, weird piles of ash and glowy bits. Oh, dear lord. Yeah. All the, oh, with all the uh, boss items and stuff, everything's kind of looking like the same item now. Silver leaf. Okay, I genuinely didn't see it. There we go. A tiny dish containing a small cluster of diamond row. The eggs are those of lesser kraken, uh, unbroken, uh, unborn, and fragile. Diamond row is highly coveted delicacy on the continents, but it's possibly more valuable as a potential alchemical ingredient. So they're not diamonds, first of all. They're row, which is fish eggs, as in like of the kraken, the, the monsters we've been seeing everywhere. Huh? That's un that's unexpected. It's always weird when you get like, oh, oh god. Did not see him in the darkness over there. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he was just standing right there the whole time I was looking at that item. <laughs> Blending in with the same colored background. <laughs> but it's always a bit of a surprise when you get the, uh... The weird biological component for some of the stuff. I, I, I think of the, uh... In particular, of like the weirdly important role in Bloodborne that, uh tonsil stones took in like basically the story and progression you're like it's a tonsil stone though i mean gross 